Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch. In this short video, I'd like to introduce you to scene storage and show you how you can implement this in your apps to remember certain states like sort order or tab selection and have that persist between launches of your app over multiple scenes. I'm also going to be referencing the raw representable protocol to simplify our scene storage management. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. There is a starter project for this video and you can download it from the link in the description. There are two branches, so make sure that you download the starter project branch. The completed branch contains the completed source code for the video. Just download and expand the zipped archive. The starter project is a pretty simple app, but I've added some features here that will demonstrate why you might want to implement scene storage in your apps, particularly if they are built for iPad or Mac OS. On an iPhone, you typically only have a single application displayed on the screen at one time. Whereas with an iPad or a Mac app, you often are able to, in the case of a iPad app, go to split view and run a second instance of the same app at the same time. And in the case of a Mac app, you might have multiple windows or scenes. So let me show you an issue that you might want to address on an iPad. Make sure that you select an iPad and run the sample application. I've chosen the M2 MacBook Air. Once it's launched, make sure that you are in landscape mode. So you may have to do some adjustments to your setup. I've got it in landscape mode here, and you can see that the app has three tabs. On the first tab, there is a list of strings and a button that will toggle between sorting ascending and descending. The other two tabs just display a text view. Now, if I tap the three dots at the top, I'm able to go into split view. And when I do that, I can choose another app to run beside this one. Well, I'm going to choose exactly the same app. And with both running, I can see that they are independent of each other. And I can choose to sort that list differently for each version. And I can switch tabs, not affecting the other instance. That's good. They're independent. Here's the thing, though. I'm going to exit to the home screen and then stop the execution of the app. When I relaunch the app, though, I see that the lists go back to the default sort order and both apps are displaying the first tab. Well, this is what scene storage will solve for us. It will allow us to save the last state and resume it on subsequent launches and store a different state for a different instance of our app. Let's go back to a single view now and see what we can do to fix this in the future. Well, what it means is that we'll need to remember the selected tab and chosen sort order when the app launches. And that means that both of those properties should be set when the first view is presented. And in our case, that's a start tab view. Our sort order, however, is actually stored or set in our first tab view. So we'll have to sort that out. Well, a scene storage property wrapper can be used in a very similar way to an app storage in how it stores information. You can assign a key and create a variable that can be used as a state property that can be passed around or updated. So in the start tab, we're going to create a scene storage property wrapper and give it the key sort order. And I'll assign it to a variable called sort order that is a sort order enum type and give it the default value of ascending, just as it is right now in our first view. As I mentioned, this works the same way as the app storage does. And since sort order is an enum that has an associated type that is a string, it'll conform to the raw representable protocol, and it's the raw value that will be stored, which in our case is either going to be ASC or DESC, the string. The computed button rotation property just rotates the toolbar button to indicate whether or not the direction is up or down. So back in our first tab view, then, we can change that state property for sort order to be a binding and remove the assignment as it's going to be passed in from the start tab. 
then to fix the preview from complaining, we can use the new previewable macro that we got in iOS 18 to create a state property that we can create as a sort order and specify that it'll be the sort order ascending. And then in the preview then, this is what we can pass in as our sort order to the first tab views preview. But back in our start tab, we'll pass in that scene storage property as the binding. Well, that takes care of the sorting option, but in order to track the selected tab, we'll need another observable property, which again can be a scene storage property. So in the start tab view, we'll create a second scene storage property by providing a key of selected tab. And I'll create a variable of the same name and assign it a default value of zero, which will make this an int. Next then we can provide this as the binding to the selection argument for our tab view. Now tab views and tab item construction changed in iOS 18, and I have a full video on that topic. If this doesn't look familiar to you, I'll leave a link in the description. The selected tab assignments now are done through a value assignment when creating the tab. So we can specify that our first tab has a value of zero, the second tab will have a value of 1, and the third a value of 2. So each time the different tab is selected, our scene storage property selected tab, which it is bound to, will get updated. So let's test this out now. Let's go back into split view and run another instance of that same application. On the first tab, we'll select Descending Sword Order, and then I'm going to set the second tab. In the second instance on the right, I'm going to leave the sort order, but I'll select the third tab. Now I'm going to tap the Home button to exit to the home screen, and I'll return to Xcode and stop execution completely and relaunch. Remember, last time it reset everything. Over this time after relaunch, we see that our tab selections are remembered. And if I go to the first tab on the left side, I see that the sort order is descending. The right hand side, it's still ascending because I never touched it. Mission accomplished. Now I want to finish this video by taking something that I learned when I created the raw representable and app storage video that you can apply too. Instead of having two different properties for scene storage, I'm going to create a single object that conforms to the raw representable protocol. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend that you give it a watch. I'll leave a link in the description. We're going to combine both of our scene storage properties into a single app state property. So let's create a new Swift file and call it app state. I'm going to create that inside the app folder. Inside there, we'll create a new struct called app state. And within the struct, we can create the two properties that were our scene storage properties. One for sort order, which is of type sort order, and we'll initialize it as ascending. And the second one for selected tab that will just default as zero, so an int. Now, in order for this struct to work for us, we're going to have to conform to the codable and raw representable protocols. So I'm going to do this as extensions. So first, I'll create an extension for app state and conform to the codable protocol. Now we get this error because we have to make sure that sort order is codable as well. So we can return to the sort order and simply add the quotable conformance here, which is fine because it's an int. And then what we learned in the video on raw representable is that our objects will fail unless we provide our own coding keys. We don't have to do anything special here. Within the quotable extension, I can simply just let Xcode generate the three necessary components. And we can use code completion for that. So first, coding keys. 
And then an initializer from the decoder. And then the encode function. Easy. And then the second thing is our app state object needs to be, besides codable, is that it needs to be raw representable. And then we'll be able to get the raw value, which will be the string of the encoded object, so that it'll get stored in our scene storage. And then when we fetch it, we'll need to decode that string in the initializer. And that was all covered in that video that I just referenced. So let's create another extension for app state that conforms to raw representable. Now this is going to require that raw value, which will be used to store our scene storage. And we're going to create a string and we can use a computed property for that. Well, we'll use a guard to fetch the data by using an optional try to use a JSON encoder to encode that object, which is self, because we know it's codable. And then we can create an app state string simply by creating a string from the data using UTF-8 encoding. Now, if either of these things fail, in the else statement, we'll simply return an empty JSON string, which is just these two braces. If it was successful then, we've got a fully encoded and converted string as our app state string, so we can simply return it. Now the other thing we'll need is a failable initializer that will get the raw value, and what we want to do is then try to convert it back to an app state object. So we'll use a guard statement here to get the data from the raw values string data using UTF-8. And then we can create the app state object by using an optional try to use a JSON decoder this time to decode that data into that app state .self type. If it failed, we'll just return nil. Otherwise, we now have that app state object that we can apply to self. Now, before we try to implement this, though, let's just go back to our simulator and delete that first app to make sure that we don't have any scene storage from the previous version hanging around. So back in Xcode then in our start tab view, I'm going to comment out those two scene storage properties. And I'm going to create a single one, a scene storage, with the key app state. And I'll create a variable of the same name and that's going to be an instance of our new app state object. And then for each of our two bound values, though, we'll need to reference that property within the app state itself. They're still bound. So let's test this out once more by running on the iPad simulator, and we're going to repeat the same process that we did earlier. I'm going to go to split view to run a second instance to the right. For the first instance, on the first tab, I'll set the sort order to descending and select the second tab. I'm going to leave the second instance's sort order on the first tab, but I'm going to select the third tab. So I'm going to tap on the Home button then to exit to the home screen. I'm going to return to Xcode. Stop the execution, and I'm going to relaunch. After relaunch, we see that our tab selections are remembered. And then if I go to the first tab on the left side, I see that that sort order is descending as we had set it. And on the right side, it's still ascending on that first tab. Again, mission accomplished. Well, that's it for this video, and I hope you've learned something new that you can use in your projects going forward. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and enable notifications so that you're made aware of new videos that I release. And you can also download my free channel listing app, be able to search for and find content from any one of my over 350 Swift and SwiftUI related videos.